For a giant in the aerospace industry, the greatest shame and humiliation is perhaps never having launched a rocket in orbit. You know who we're talking about. Yes, that's Blue Origin. But the story started to change for Blue Origin, as their only orbital rocket, New Glenn, is showing more positive developments than we might have thought. So what has happened recently with the New Glenn rocket? Can New Glenn's incremental progress catch up with their arch-rival SpaceX's Starship? What's the core factor behind SpaceX's success that Blue Origin may still only need a few more years to achieve? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. After two months of silence since the first cryogenic test of the New Glenn simulator in March, we recently saw Blue Origin showcase a new image of the new orbital rocket simulator on its homepage. We're rolling out our New Glenn simulator again today for a series of transport director integrated ground tests in preparation for launch later this year. Tests will include powering up the pumps that provide pressure to the vehicle's hydraulic system, validating the ground system supplying commodities to the rocket, and a rapid retract test of the umbilical connections. More to come. Well, this is a positive sign. Alongside the affirmation and promise of a definite launch later this year, Blue Origin is conducting a series of ground tests on its other rocket simulator. However, I don't quite understand why they continually use the simulator for testing. If you have the answer to this, please comment and let us know. Back in March, we saw a perfect representation of the New Glenn rocket simulator, which was erected vertically on the platform and even underwent a cryogenic test to check its structure. What we expected next was a static fire test of the 7BE4 engines in the first stage. But in reality, they're repeating tests with new simulators. Although continuous testing is a prudent approach, it raises the question, where's the flight hardware? Can Blue Origin achieve the pace needed to meet the goal of launching by the end of the year? Or will it face another unending delay? Hopefully, in the coming time, Blue Origin will provide satisfactory answers to these questions. Frankly speaking, these recent events highlighted the difference in working styles between Blue Origin and its competitor SpaceX. Indeed, if that were the case with SpaceX's Starship, we would have a much more tangible and clear perspective. After all, the principle of work and continuous innovation is the core factor that's allowed the less experienced private company to surpass Blue Origin by many years. SpaceX has no superior engineering access or smarter people than their competition, BO included. What they do have is a management structure that not only allows innovation and risk-taking, but actively encourages it. Elon Musk is plain when he states that the penalty for trying something innovative and failing is low, but the penalty for acquiring a new solution and not being innovative is high, usually resulting in job loss for the individual concerned. In combination with this top-driven philosophy, SpaceX designs systems like a tech company would design new software. Traditional aerospace companies are risk-averse and will only reveal a new product when they are very sure that the design's finalized and has all the bugs ironed out. They'll spend a huge amount of time designing and redesigning each component with reliability being paramount, and each department is secluded within their own management structure. Design changes that affect another department's work are very difficult to get approved, and anyone who wants to make a significant change has an uphill battle on their hands to get upper management to authorize what may be a risky change. SpaceX, on the other hand, is famous for making huge pivots and design changes at the drop of a hat. Look no further than the decision to build the Starship out of stainless steel, when at the time everything was focused on carbon fiber, even to the point where major components were being constructed and tested, and the company was actively recruiting carbon fiber specialists. When Musk was convinced of the advantages of the change, he immediately convinced everyone else and made things happen at a startling pace. SpaceX is also famous for adopting the nimble design approach, where the philosophy is that if you don't know what the final product will look like other than the design goals, don't waste your time meticulously designing a component that won't be required until the final stages of development. This frees up people to focus on the immediate issues that need to be addressed, and the system evolves in a very organic-like process. Finally, Musk has adopted the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. He has repeatedly said that the best design is no design. The best component is no component. By this, he means that if something is not an essential requirement for the system to work, then it shouldn't be there. This means that the ultimate product is more reliant on good design than sheer complexity, which can bog down a project. These principles have resulted in the construction of a large amount of cheaply made and simple prototypes that were built to be destroyed. Each RUD was a wealth of information that directly influenced the next test article until the issue at hand was resolved, and then everyone moved on to the next stage to be worked on. Nobody wastes time wondering, what if we have issues with XYZ in the future when it's much faster to simply build the XYZ and then test it in real-life operation? This approach rapidly weeds out the design dead ends that can be money pits and cause cost overruns. 
So, we have seen the evolution of Starship from the ITS in 2016 to its current design, which is still being refined and even at this late stage is undergoing significant comprehensive changes. What design changes has New Glenn undergone? There is no doubt that some changes have occurred behind the quite secretive walls of Blue Origin over the last 10 years of its development, yet we still see a New Glenn model that is not significantly different from the public announcement in 2016. Even during production, Blue Origin announced the Jarvis project, which is entirely focused on the upper stage of the system and is a blatant copy of what SpaceX has already done. Blue Origin, under Jeff Bezos, seems to be more concerned with fitting in with the established industry, building alliances, and acquiring political influence. SpaceX, on the other hand, has deliberately gone the opposite direction, relying on vertical integration when outside suppliers were shown to be unreliable. It would appear that self-reliance and willingness to fail openly is a winning tactic. It's commendable for SpaceX and their incredible project, but this doesn't mean I'm undermining Blue Origin. I must say that during the late 2023 and early 2024 period, the company's made significant efforts in developing its New Glenn project with increased public disclosures. A likely reason for this could be Jeff Bezos' decision to change CEOs. At the end of 2023, former CEO Bob Smith officially left Blue Origin and was replaced by Dave Limp, who had previously served as Senior VP of Devices and Services over at Amazon. So now what they need to do is continue to accelerate their work on the new orbital rocket. The initial tests for New Glenn will aim to validate the functionality of Blue Origin's launch pad and ground systems as a design. Hopefully, we will see soon the hot fire tests of the BE-4 engines integrated with the vehicle this summer. Besides, Blue Origin's completing the first stage of its fourth New Glenn, a reusable system that will land on a barge downrange in the Atlantic. The company in 2022 scrapped plans to use a recovery ship as the New Glenn landing platform. This is easier to operate, and this is all about the cost for us and lowering the cost of access to space. The barge was along the line of doing that, Jared Jones, senior vice president, New Glenn said. Building on experience operating its reusable New Shepard suborbital launch system, Blue plans to use its New Glenn rockets beginning with the first flight. That sounds aggressive, but it's not, Jones said. Think about how many times we've landed New Shepard right on the dime. All the avionics systems, flight systems, and everything that we've learned, we transferred over. Even the people have all come to work for New Glenn, so I feel pretty confident. The New Glenn fleet will initially consist of four first stages, all of which are in production. Blue is building a booster refurbishment facility about one mile away from LC-36 on Central Control Road. Early booster refurbishment will take place at the SLC-36 integration facility. Turnaround time between flights of the first stages is targeted for 30 days. We planned and designed everything to fly within 30 days, but obviously we have to wait for the first flight to determine how quickly we turn around, Jones said. From the landing to the gears and the avionics, the total system has been purpose-built for reusability. Blue can launch 12 times a year from the start. In reality, we can easily double that, Jones said. We're bringing in equipment to get to 24 launches a year, and we could do more. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.